Well, we're back with the lathe. After I got the new lathe, and you could read my, you could see my reviews in my other video, I had it for about a week, and then the speed control stopped working. Well, I should just say that the lathe went, goes real slow, like that, and, and there's no effect when you turn the speed control. So they sent me a new one, a new potentiometer, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show how to install loop potentiometer in the WEN 3427 lathe. I've not done this, so it'll be an experience for both of us. Let's get started. Okay, I've got you zoomed in on the control panel. And I'm going to take out these Phillips head screws. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, let's unplug this. That's always a good idea. Okay, so we don't have a lot of room here. And there's a cover on the back here, and that's got to come off. And there's four small Phillips head screws. I wonder how they think you're going to do this. All right. I've got a small 90 degree ratchet here. Okay, just about have it. This last screw was really tough to get. Okay, so that's the four screws. I took a combination of a straight Phillips head and that angled one. Okay. So, let's take the knob off. Undo the nut that holds the potentiometer. So, let's make sure the color code is the same. Red, white, black that way. So, I can just tie the new one into the red, white, and black wires, and I'll be good. So what I'm going to do is cut these, because this is a good place to work right here. It's kind of easy to, for, for access. And I'm going to solder these in place and cover it with heat shrink tubing and that should take care of it. So I'll get my soldering stuff ready and uh, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So I'm going to start by cutting off these extra wires here. And stripping them. If you don't have or, or you don't know how to solder, if you're not really good at it, you could just as easily use small wire nuts, which I have, but I just as soon make a more permanent connection because I can. Okay, so that's ready. Let's cut out the old one. And they certainly don't give you a lot of wire. Let's 
this is going to be a little tight. I might not be able to use this stripper. Let's. Uh, and this one I think is going to be too big. Let's see. You always want to twist the wires together on a stranded wire before you do anything, whether it's wire nuts or solder. So you got to remember to put the heat shrink on first. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to do that. Slide it up out of the way. And I, when I solder in line like this, I like to wrap the wires around each other like this. So they're coming from this direction. And that makes it a smoother transition. And there's no big bump. It's easier to get the heat shrink tubing on it. So that's what I'm doing twisting these around each other. Okay, so I've got the wire spliced in. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm sort of zoomed in. White to white, red to red, black to black. I got the heat shrink on. What I'm going to do is plug it in and see if this works. Because if it doesn't, then I probably don't want to put this back together. I probably want to leave it apart while I get more parts. Make sure that's off. Okay, I'm going to turn this down to the slow position. Make sure nothing's touching anything that shouldn't touch. And that's it was the potentiometer. Okay, so I'm going to button it up and, and declare it good. Hopefully this one will last longer than the other one did. Uh, it does have the specification on it. It's a 10K potentiometer, 10,000 ohms, which means I could put my own in. If this continues to go bad, I would buy a higher quality potentiometer, like a wire wound. Uh, there seems to be enough room inside the little box here that you can put a either a more high rated one in terms of watts. This is probably a half watt specification. Doesn't really say, but a wire wound would, would be more durable. Uh, I do know that it's a different brand. So maybe they've switched suppliers and, and this is a higher quality one than the, bad, the past one. All right, I'm gonna wrap up the video right there. Off camera, I went ahead and put it back together and tested it again. Works fine. I hope this video is useful if you have a similar kind of problem. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you feel so inclined, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.